Welcome to this presentation on modular extruders by Graham Engineering. My name is David Madar, I'm the Strategic Market Manager, Medical at Graham Engineering, American Kuna brand. And today we're going to talk a little bit about our modular extruders and how they may be able to help you in your extrusion needs and their advantages. At uh, Graham Engineering, we have three different size modular extruders, starting with our small, which goes from half inch to one inch, our medium, that goes from three quarters of an inch to inch and a quarter, and our large from inch and a quarter to inch and three quarters. Uh, some of the features that we'll be talking about today will be the uh, feed section liners that can be replaced very quickly reduced change over time between modules, casting stainless steel feed sections, which are standard on these extruders, uh, how you can add a melt pump to these systems, and how they can be customized for almost all your applications. Before we leave the slide, we can take a look at the extruder and here they're powered with the servo motor for the screw. You can see that there's stainless steel covers on the uh, on the barrel module and nickel plated clamp. You have a large HMI with a dual knuckle swing arm and stainless steel doors and, and cladding on the sides. Uh, we can do a pharmaceutical version that has more stainless steel components on it as well. Here at the tra at a trade show, we have one of our lab technicians changing out a barrel module uh, and showing people how easy it is to do. We actually had attendees at the show changing out the barrel modules and uh, they were able to do it in less than four minutes, which is quite quick. Um, all it takes is removing two plugs, one for the power and one for the uh, heaters, and removing four bolts around the circumference of the barrel, uh, putting this lift card underneath it and pulling it out. Once you do that, you can get into the feed section liner, which we'll go into a little bit more later, pull it out, and then replace it with new. Now, you can do this for a variety of reasons. This is a one inch barrel module. You might wanna take it off and replace it with another one inch barrel module. If you were changing materials or colors and just wanna do a quick changeover uh, for the same size module. Uh, if you were going to a much smaller part that required a smaller extruder, then you could take this barrel module off. And let's say put in a three quarter inch barrel module, put in the three quarter inch screw, put in a three quarter inch feed throat liner and be up and ready to run in very short time. These extruders are also smart extruders, so they know what barrel modules on them uh, by the configuration of the plugs. So you can take off that one inch barrel module and replace it with a three quarter inch barrel module. And the torque will change from the torque required uh, and the torque limits set for a one inch barrel module and be set to the torque limits of the three quarter inch barrel module and screw combination. This is all done without having an operator have to change any settings or put it on a run sheet or something of that nature. It's done automatically by the extruder without any interaction needed. These are the feed section liners I was speaking about. Here you see one being changed now. If this was actually a running extruder, it would be a good idea to be wearing a hot glove. But um, you don't need to have any tools to take this out. Once you remove the four bolts and take off the barrel module, this is 
available for you to just slide out and change. Um, you can change it for, for that reason to a different size, or you can change it for different configurations or different metals, depending on your material or the metal that you use for the feed section liners might be different. We could do Inconel, we can do some exotic stainless steels, we could just do a nitrided version of one, um, whatever you require. Also, we can give it to you with this nice wide feed opening, a tangential feed throat liner, or a grooved feed throat liner, depending on the materials you're going to run. Here's a quick chart of um, the type of liner we would use for different materials. And this isn't really able to be done on standard extruders without a lot of work to get in there and change out the whole feed section. So here on HDPE, we would use a grooved liner, but on a PBAX, we would just use a standard liner. On a urethane, you'd use a tangential liner. So these are just rules of thumb and you know there's some overlap but there's also some no's like you wouldn't want to use a groove liner for urethane or PVC. So um, this is the chart we'd use for that and you can keep liners on the shelf just like you keep spare screws or different screws on the shelf. Some other features of the modular extruder are this hopper with the slide. This allows you to fill the, the hopper without it over the feed section. If you wanna warm it up without the material in there, and, or if you have a dryer, which you can put on here because it's strong enough to handle a, a throat mounted dryer, you can overnight leave it in the dryer, powered up dryer material and not put it over the feed throat until the morning. If you want, once you want to empty it, you can put it over this whole section. You can dump it into a bucket or a bag or whatever. A uh, very popular uh, feature of these extruders. And while we're on this slide, you can see that we have the, a better picture of the double knuckle swing arm and the, uh, the thin HMI, large screen HMI, but it's very thin, easy to get to wherever you need it or push it out of the way. So large area filter assembly, another popular option we have. Um, it takes the standard breaker plate and increases the size of the screen pack that you would put in here. So the normal screen pack would be this size. And on the large area filter, it would be that size. Um, it gives you about nine times better filtering than a standard screen pack. Uh, many people have used it in place of candle filters. Filtering is not quite as good as a candle filter, but it does uh, much better than just a screen pack. Uh, popular in tubes where you're going to be blowing balloons on a in a tube, um, where you don't want to have any gels or burnt material or any other contamination that might have been in the raw material. You can also use a melt pump and keep the footprint quite small if you use a modular extruder. Here you see a melt pump and drive system mounted vertically with the servo motor on the bottom, servo gearbox, coupling, and then the melt pump in line here. Uh, it's all mounted on a rugged swing arm, so you can swing it in into place if you're using it, swing it out of the way if you're not using it. Also on um, these modular extruders, since you can change the, the module size, you also might wanna change the pump size. So we put in a variety of mounting positions so that you, it would take different size pumps to match the barrel modules that are being used. Since we use 
servo motors on our modular extruders, they're very easy to control the speed of a servo motor uh, accurately. So we use that in conjunction with a very fast pressure loop in our control system to adjust the screw speed for die pressure control. And we do that with this pre second pressure transducer that we put in the die adapter. And we have feedback from this transducer and tweak the speed of the extruder screw to keep the pressure constant. Here's a slide that shows pressure control off. This is at this is before the breaker plate where you still get some screw beat, so the control is not as as good, but this is without. Pressure control and here's no pressure control at the die. Once you turn on the pressure control, you see that it gets better, but you still have the screw beat before the breaker plate. But over in the die adapter where it really counts, it's very, very good. Uh, the pressure variation was 0.4% when we did this test, and the tube variation for the tube that we were making was under 0 0.001 inch, which is very good. Our modular extruders come with three different control systems that we uh, program in-house. The XC100 is a replacement for discrete controls. It does your temperature control and uh, can do pressure control for one extruder. The XC200 does one extruder. It can do a melt pump as well and one piece of downstream equipment. The XC300 is our system controller. It can do multiple extruders with melt pumps and can can interface into the downstream equipment that we have here and any other special functions that uh, are required by the customer. We also make medical systems at Graham Engineering using our modular extruders, standard extruders as well. And um, we can do this by you just supplying us with drawings of the parts you wanna make and the materials you're gonna use and we can spec out a whole extrusion system for you. Uh, we only make the extruders, but we can partner with people uh, for the downstream equipment, for gauging equipment. Here is an OD gauge, um, vacuum tank, pullers, cutters, winders, uh, anything needed on these lines, air internal air supplies. So um, we can design the system for you, or if you have something in mind, we can, um, we can quote on that as well. And this can all be done for multi-layer multi tubing, bump tubing, micro tubing, multi-layer micro extrusions, and multi-lumen tubes. So uh, we can provide complete systems for all of these. We can um, check them out in. You can come once travel restrictions are lifted and see your extruders before they're shipped. Uh, run some material on the line, get training, and uh, prove them out. And uh, this is in our lab right here, so you could also come in and uh, run your material in our lab as well. The other thing with um, compact modular extruders, being so sm their size and platform so small, is that they nest together very well in multiple extruder configurations. Here you see a popular tri-layer configuration where you have a three-quarter inch extruder and two half-inch extruders. We also do a lot of these with a one-inch extruder and two three-quarter inch extruders, um, but they work very well with the modular extruders. You see how tight it gets in there, but uh, you know they if you had bigger bases and bigger extruders, they kind of get in the way. So these work very well for that. So at Graham, we also have standard extruders. So uh, here we have the modular extruder we just discussed. We have the uh, discrete controls on our standard extruder and also our standard ultra extruder uh, that we also supply. So thank you for listening today. I appreciate it. Um, if you have any questions, 
uh, please contact us at Graham Engineering. Uh, give us a call. Check us out on the website. And um, appreciate you joining us today. Thank you.